Happy Tuesday, everybody. Andy from wagertalk.com. It is Dana White Contender Series, week nine, and we're going to break down every fight. Unfortunately, we lost one of the fights. We're down to four, and it's a bummer because that fight I was very much looking forward to, but it does look like they're moving it to next week. So next week, we'll have six fights. That's the rumors. I'm not sure how they're going to pull it off. One of the guys missed weight by five pounds. <laughs> so uh, not very good. Not very good. So uh, first off, before we get into the fights, and this is not going to be a long video. We only got four fights, and some of them are pretty straightforward. So uh, hit the like button, please. Let's uh, Wager Talk know I'm doing a good job for all you guys. And our uh, Dana White Contender Series best bet is up at wagertalk.com. I was so happy we did not have a UFC event on Saturday. I needed the weekend off. Um, from UFC, but we're back at it. 11 and three MMA run last week did not go that good. The video wasn't very good as far as picks go. Uh, that was, that was my, that was my big swing and miss this season so far. So we'll get back on track. There's always one or two cards that trip me up every, every year. There's 10, 10 cards. If I can do really good on seven or eight of them, I'm a happy, happy man. So, and, uh, also guys uh, join us on the YouTube channel, take down live, take down live tonight. Uh, we watch all the fights live. It's a blast. Uh, we do, if there's any really good spots for in-fight wagers, things like that. Um, it's just, it's myself and uh, my buddy Jim, uh, we break down all the fights and it's just, uh, I love Tuesday nights. So join us there. All right, let's get into the fights here. And we're going to start with Riso Rufi and Raymond Magomedaliev. So, We've got two Magomeds, the Magomed night, and I remember this happening last year where these guys came from Khabib's leagues slash camps, however you want to say it, and they fight in the Dagestani wrestling style, and uh, you know they use their striking to set up the takedowns, and if memory serves, these guys just, I mean, rolled through contender series. There's a chance that happens again tonight, so um, I have seen... There's 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 some momentum here behind Mauricio. Uh, the face-offs yesterday were pretty funny. Uh, Mauricio tried to uh, mean mug uh, Raymond. Raymond gave him a, a, a little smirk and a, and a grin. So I will start with Raymond. Um, this guy's 10-1, and one and he's fought good, good competition. Listen, this fight against Impa was awesome. I mean, that was a three-round uh, grapple brawl. It required a lot of energy, a lot of cardio. And Impa is looking fantastic. The resurgence of Impa has been amazing. He's in the PFL finals. He's been knocking guys out. He looks absolutely fantastic after his stint in UFC was over. He looks better now than he did in the UFC. I wonder if I wonder if he ends up with another run in UFC because he looks good. But so that is a that's a really, really good win. And listen, Raymond fights. Like you would expect a Magomed from you know Dagestani style wrestler, he he takes guys down. He uses uh, you know he likes ground and pound. Um, his striking is good. Uh, it's it's not it's not great, but he uses it to really set up the these these different. He uses it to set up the different strikes, all in the name of kind of getting you ground and holding you there. So I think he's going to have success. Uh, using this style. It may not be the most exciting looking style, but I think Mauricio is going to provide some entertainment here because this guy's a striker. My problem is he just has not fought very good guys. Like he looks great. If the guy stands there and lets him punch him, then Mauricio's your guy. Yes. If you stand there and you let Mauricio punch you, you're going to, yeah, you're going to get sparked here. So he has this loss against a three, no guy, in 2019, doesn't fight till 2022. He fights a guy in his first ever fight. And if you went back and watched that fight, eh, he looked like it was his first fight ever. So we'll leave it at that. Then he fights uh, Lascar. Listen, this this Lascar guy is terrible. He's not very good. I mean, this guy's lost four out of five. He just stood there and <laughs> let Mauricio tee off on him. I mean, like, Mauricio could, could wind up and then hit him when the guy was against the rope. So... If that's your definition of good power, then great. Yeah, he's got good power. And then he fights uh, Torres on a pay-per-view here. Uh, Torres is 37 years old. He's fought almost 50 times. Believe it or not, this guy had his, uh, two fights in the UFC in 2010, like 14 years ago. So he uh, unfortunately lost both of those. But I just I don't think Mauricio's game looks very mature. I don't think it's well-rounded. 
And I think the obvious play here is for Magomed to take him down, for Raymond to take him down. And I think that's what we're going to see. And once it gets on the ground, I do think... I don't know what the cardio of like for Maria is going to be. I mean, look at these fights. Knockout round two. Not round one. Round one. Round two. Round one. Round. So... I actually, the, the cardio, I think, goes to uh, it goes to Raymond in this one. And the line keeps moving towards Mauricio. So uh, the people see something in him. And this line is getting close. And I'm really, really surprised by it. So um, if you like Raymond Magomedliev, then you maybe wait a little bit. My here, What I've noticed has happened with Contender Series lines is if you have a favorite on Monday night, at Tuesday morning... It dips towards the underdog, and then it starts to shoot up as the day goes on. So if you like Maga Medliev, I would maybe jump on him sooner rather than later because I bet this line starts moving more towards the favorite. But I do think Raymond wins. I think it's a bad matchup for Mauricio, and I think within the first few minutes of the fight, you're going to see Mauricio try and throw some pretty big shots and I think Raymond eats him and then ends up just kind of taking him to the ground. It might not be exciting, but I could absolutely see a finish on the ground here because I don't think Mauricio has been tested in that area like he's going to be tested tonight. Uh, the next Magomed, this is Magomed, Magomed Godziluov, Godzia, Godzia Sulov. I'm sorry, I'm butchering the guy's name. Uh, my deepest apologies. Fighting Jose Medina, and if you saw face-offs, Jose Medina has that look of, I am just happy to be here. <laughs> so I'll start with Jose Medina has fought bad competition. He likes to brawl. He tries, it does look like he tries to get fights to the ground, but I don't think his cardio is that great. He's not fast on the feet and it's a very, very raw style of fighting. There's not much technique to what Jose Medina does. I mean, a split decision in Thunder Fight 42 to a guy that's 4-2. and two. And if you watch that fight, it was bonkers. Uh, absolutely bizarre. Uh, congratulations, you beat a guy that's 11-22. and 22. So uh, Jose Medina might be in for a long, long night. I mean, these fight, th this fight is at minus 1,200 at this point. So... Um, Magomed, listen, what else is there to say? 7-0. You're going to see him, at least this is what he did in his, his last couple fights. He really switches his stance on the feet a lot. Uh, so when he's on the feet, he is, it's it's unlike most of the other uh, Dagestani-style fighters. Where I mean, he's just jumping around, jumping around, and um, I don't think he look. It looks like he's going for the knockout on the feet. I think everything is to set up the takedown. So um, this guy, I mean, listen. Not only is he seven zero as a pro, but he he won seven straight amateur fights. So I think he comes in here and he makes pretty quick work of Medina. So these two Magomed fights, these fights to not go the distance, are going to be pretty decent betting uh, spots. I don't see this one going the distance. And honestly, it's more if Mauricio is going to win, it's probably going to be because of a knockout, a big shot. So maybe instead of, you know, maybe if you're a little bit nervous about Raymond, I think playing unders on this fight would be pretty good. So um, we mentioned the fight that we lost, which is just a real shame. Uh, it's, I'm glad they're going to do it because, gosh, that was going to be such a fun fight. And I had tons of notes on this, uh, on that fight. So unfortunately, we lost a fight that was going to be really fun. And I had some some pretty good bets on this one. Um, this next one, Eduardo Torres and Victor Hugo Silva. I'm going to make this pretty clear because this is a, a betting you know, channel and a show that focuses on betting. I, I, there's no way I'm betting on this fight. The only, only thing that you maybe could convince me to do is to take the fight to not go the distance. There are so many questions about these guys trying to, well, first off, trying to find film on these guys is, is pretty tough. And the film that you do find is a is a little bizarre. We'll start here with Eduardo Torres who's 16 and 1 and uh, listen, these records are um they look to be padded. They look to be a little bit shady on some of these opponents that he's fought, but whatever. He goes out and he wins. Um this this need of the liver was not a real hard shot to the liver and the guy went down. I know it doesn't need to be a hard shot to the liver, but I mean, so he wins this 
need a liver, and there's just not a whole lot I can find. These guys are both wild. I wouldn't say they're they're very technical fighters. Um, I talked about this not going the distance, but he, he's gone to decision in some of these weird promotions that I don't know that much about. So finding film on these guys is hard enough. So I'm just going to say from a betting perspective, it's just going to be a pass. Way too many questions, and I do not want my hard-earned money to go into a fight like this. Am I going to be an interested fan? Absolutely. Is this the fight I'm most excited to see tonight? Absolutely. It's going to be wild. So we take a look at <laughs> Victor's. So he wins 23 seconds by a heel hook. And by the way, it looked like he really hurt the guy. Um, it's being hurt the guy. Here's another leg injury. I mean, these fights are <laughs> these fights are over in 40 seconds. What can you possibly find against this guy? Uh, his his fight against Kami was. Uh, Shinsuke was was pretty good and pretty entertaining. I just these guys are wild. I think you're going to see a little of everything. You're going to see crazy striking. You're going to see some crazy grappling attempts. Do I have any idea who's going? Absolutely not. No clue. I do think somebody finishes just because they're so crazy, so raw that I think someone leaves their chin open and gets cracked. If it goes on the ground, I think someone's going to somehow wrap up a choke because I don't think that both their wrestling and grappling defense is very good. It's just going to be a wild fight. But betting-wise, guys, I just cannot recommend betting anything on this fight. So no opinion on who wins. Don't have the slightest clue. But it is going to be entertaining. So, And in the main event, looks like we got Rodolfo Beato, who we've seen before, against Murtaza Tala and... I, this is just a wrestling. This is going to be a, a a wrestling match. So Rodolfo has lost twice in his career, both to the same guy, Vitor Petrino. And in his in this, it, when he was on Contender Series, he had, he does what he does, where he pushes guys up against the fence and tries to hold them there. He'll strike a little bit, but he is looking for he's looking for the the, the clinch game. So uh, in the second round, they they broke away from the clinch. They get out on the feet, and Petrino sparks him. Credit to him, he goes to LFA, and he wins two fights in a row. And so now he's back on Contender Series. He's getting another shot. So um, not real impressed with his LFA fight, to be honest. Uh, I, I mean, this his win against uh, Masaros was okay. It's a first-round finish. That's good. But this sec this next fight, it was, now, to his credit, it was a five-round fight, so you don't want to blow your, your gas tank in the first round, but it's just pretty boring where he pushes up against the fence. There's just not a lot of excitement. Um, not a lot of excitement on the feet. Uh, he just, it's, it's clinch, hope, pray, try and take guys down and, you know, win by points. He can overwhelm, you know, fighters lesser than him, but he does really struggle against guys that are equal or above him. It doesn't seem like he can up his game to that level. And uh, this guy, Man, Murtaza is an absolute tank. This guy is so strong. He's going to be smaller, but he's going to be stronger. And <clears throat> I don't know about his cardio. I mean, round one, round one, round one, round one. So I don't know if Bayado is going to be able to thwart the wrestling because this is what Tala does. Very low volume on the striking, if any. He likes to get up against the fence, get guys down, and then just look for submissions and and finishes on the ground. So uh, this arm bar was really crazy. It came out of nowhere. Like he was not look. He was wasn't searching for an arm bar. It just kind of happened. He was looking more for the ground and pound or the rear naked choke. Gets the arm bar, and that one was weird. I don't know what kind of beef they had, but he got up and <laughs> pushed the guy. He just almost broke his arm, threw his mouth guard at him. It was really weird. And then this fight against. Um, Kamitsky, I can only find highlights on it, but he looked good. So I don't know what cardio is going to be like here. <laughs> what if what if this gets out of the second round and Tala starts to fade? If it's a first round finish, my guess is it's going to be Murtaza. But if this thing gets out of the first round, Bayato may have the better cardio, and you could just see two guys that are really, really tired, and that is going to drive Dana White absolutely bonkers. So this is a tough one to, to pick. I think if you're – I honestly think if you're p picking Rataza Tala, he's like close to minus 300. I think you don't – I think you skip that. You just take him inside the distance. 
or, you know, take him to win in round one because I, this guy, man, he's carrying a lot of muscle. And we've seen that before. When these guys carry a lot of muscle, they can get tired very quick. And Rodolfo has been, his last fight was five rounds. That's not exciting, but he can absolutely make it <laughs> through, through these three rounds. So you could, this could be a good live bet opportunity if it gets out of the first round. You see Tala starting to tire. I think Rodolfo may pull away in rounds two or three. So um, I don't know if I have an official. I, I, I don't have an official pick in this one uh, because I think I think Rodolfo may be able to at least make it difficult for Tala in the first round to get him down on the ground. That being said, Tala is so strong. He might get down there, but I, 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 I think the dog may be in play here in a really in a really boring fight unless these guys surprise and they come out and try and strike. And maybe that's what these guys have been told is like, listen, you guys have to come out and put on some kind of exciting fight. Dana's not going to give you a contract. You you would be better off losing in an amazing, epic, striking fight than you are winning in a boring wrestling fight. So um, I, I guess if you're, I guess if you're making me pick a, a video, this is certainly, certainly not, I'm not betting on this and I wouldn't advise you to either, but for purpose of purpose of the video, yeah, give me a little sprinkle on Rodolfo uh, to win if he makes it out of the first round and tests this cardio of Tala. So like I said, if you're betting uh, uh, Murtaza, I wouldn't waste, I, w I wouldn't worry about money line. I would just bet him uh uh, to win by finish. If he can get Rodolfo on the ground, maybe he's the real deal. But I would, I, I'm going to have the live lines open for sure to make sure that if Tala starts gassing, uh, I'll be, I'll be betting on Rodolfo for sure. So uh, to recap, I like Raymond Magomedliev over uh, Mauricio. I, even though, even though there's there money has come on and come in on him this morning, I still think Raymond gets it done. I think Magomed runs through Jose Medina. The odds suggest that Medina just, I don't think is, going to have anything for uh for for Magomed here the Torres and Silva I'm just going to be a fan and watch that fight it's going to be wild maybe as ever so slight lean to the fight to not go the distance but uh I have no no strong opinions on who comes out of that wild fight and then Rodolfo I think is a live dog here against Tala in a wrestling match so be interested to see how Murtaza does here um against a, a veteran who can clinch as well. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Like I said, quick video. Next week, it looks like they're going to try and do six fights on Contender Series. So next week to close out the season, the video should be much longer with uh, some really good fights to break down. So don't forget, the best bet is up on wagertalk.com. We're on a really nice 11-3 and three MMA run. UFC best bet for the Saturday is up as well. So um, all plays and all sports uh, are available at wagertalk.com. Coming on for a really nice Monday night football win. Was uh, was really happy with that play. So doing well, doing well in all sports. So, all right, guys, good luck. Don't forget to join us on the uh, YouTube channel, Takedown Live, tonight at 740. That's the YouTube channel, Takedown Live, if you want to watch all the fights with us. Um, it's a blast. Love Tuesday night. So good luck on all your bets. We'll see you everyone next video.